Jews celebrated Yom Kippur last weekend, which is considered the holiest of days on the Jewish calendar. It is, of course, a day of atonement in which Jewish believers ask for forgiveness for their sins of the previous year. And perhaps feeling that they didn't have enough sins to fill up a whole atonement, or maybe just eager to get a few more forgivable sins in under the wire, a bunch of misogynistic fucksticks in Tel Aviv decided to celebrate the holiday by starting fist fights with women over the city's refusal to keep celebrations gender segregated. Now, if you listen to this show regularly, you'll know that this is a huge problem in Israel right now. A lot of conservative Jewish sects demand strict segregation of genders, and they cause no end of trouble for airlines, restaurants, and city planners as a result. And of course, entitled fucks that they are when the larger society refuses to accommodate them, they just accommodate themselves. Or at least they try to, which is what led to the violence last Sunday. Now, to be clear, the city and the nation's Supreme Court have banned gender-segregated public celebrations. These assholes can, of course, go to their synagogues or their private events and celebrate in whatever way they see fit. But when it comes to state-funded shit on state-owned property, all genders are welcome as a matter of law. But that didn't stop activists from the Orthodox group Rosh Yehudi from trying to erect a makeshift barrier between men and women during one such event, presumably physically separating like husbands and wives and shit. But it's not all bad news for this week. I have a story that's technically good news, though in that haven't we already done this kind of way we're so used to on twin. So congratulations to the state of Michigan for finally doing away with child marriage. That's right. Up until now, it's been legal for 16 and 17 year old kids to get married with parental consent because, you know, they still belong to their parents at that age. And with the approval of parents and a judge, they could get married even younger. Of course, these laws are vestiges of the perverse idea that the correct solution to teen pregnancy is two lifelong commitments rather than one or an abortion. So it really is a pretty important victory whenever we manage to excise one from the law books. And even if we can't actually get the laws overturned, it's probably a good thing to force conservative Christians to defend them in public, you know, in between charges that Democrats are groomers. Anyway. I do have one last story for you, and it's an important one, because on an episode last week of the Daily Wire's Michael Knowles show, host Michael Knowles told listeners that, quote, every single abortion clinic in the United States has a satanic coven attached to it, end quote. So, uh, yeah, no, they're on to us. Just be on the lookout for true patriots at the next Black Mass. And with that warning imparted, I suppose I can hand things back over to Noah. And Eli.